You watch it week in, week out. Is this going to be the game changer regards player and fan behaviour that we need? Only if they see it through. You know, we, we, we've been promised things like this in the past. It's very easy to stamp out dissent, particularly from players. If, if as soon as a player gets in the face or tries to confront a referee, if he's shown a yellow card, if he does it again, he's, sh- he's shown a second yellow card and he's sent off, then you will stamp it out very quickly. My issue with this is that referees haven't been strong enough to stop this level of abuse, and it, it has gone too far. This is long overdue, in my opinion. Obviously, those scenes at Old Trafford, I remember being on air that afternoon. I laid the blame firmly at Marco Silva's door because his ridiculous reaction to what was actually a nailed-on penalty got into the heads of his players. They lost it. Mitrovic, in particular, lost it. It cost Fulham dear because they were challenging for Europe at that stage and Mitrovic's suspension put pay to that. But, you know, Marco Silva, he should have been banned from the touchline for for the rest of the season, in my opinion, because he was the lightning rod for what happened at Old Trafford. Again, I think the FA missed an opportunity by not coming down hard enough. You had Jurgen Klopp towards the end of the season in the face of an assistant referee. He should have been hit much harder. So it's all well and good coming up with these ideas and the sentiments are admirable, but they've got to have the courage in their convictions. They've got to start putting their money where their mouth is and actually camping down hard on the offenders because it sets totally the wrong example. I go to watch grassroots football with my kids and they're impressionable. You know, that they act on a Saturday morning like their Premier League heroes act on television that afternoon. So something does need yeah. to be done. Yeah. Would you be happy to see more yellow and red cards? I would. Because that, I think the Purs at B expect to see more of them yeah. right from the start of the season. So if we do see more of them, we're like, yeah, that's what it needs. And it won't take long. You know, if you, no if you, if you send a, f- a couple of players early on for dissent, for being aggressive towards a match official the other players will quickly fall into line because teams can't afford to have players sent off. Yeah. I mean, what, what, did, what did Mourinho get, Luke, uh, the, after the Roma game, after the Roma final? Four games. And that wasn't enough. That that, he was a disgrace. Absolute, absolutely terrible. Confronting a referee in a car park. He, he should have been banned from UEFA competitions for all of next season. And that, and that would have sent out a message. Don't do it again. It's not acceptable. I mean, this this new uh, code of conduct for the technical area, the technical area code of conduct includes only one person being allowed at the front of the area to coach. Again, I remember that European final. Mourinho's literally getting off, getting out the, the, the dugout and saying to the rest of them, come with me, come on. Yeah, It's got to stop. It seems the big names, as you say, young kids are so impressionable. They'll look at Mourinho, they'll look at others and they'll think... Well, if he does it, we should do it. We can have a laugh with this. And my mind goes back, actually, to the under-21 European Championship final. Glory night for England. But if you remember, there were chaotic scenes at the end of that game after Spain were awarded a penalty. There were red cards being brandished to various members of both coaches' backroom staff because they were uh, crowding the officials all on the technical area. So I think, actually, that rule, one person in the technical area... I think that would make a massive difference straight away because you won't you won't get those scenes. Well, right away, Alex, I'm, I'm just flash it through my mind. We're going to see some different images when the top games start because you, you never see Eddie Howe without Jason Tindall. You never see Jason Tindall without Eddie Howe. That's going to change. They're not going to be shoulder to shoulder. If they follow through with this, that's not, that's going to change. And, so and from number that one and number two are no longer going to be side by side in the technical area. Yeah, and quite often you'll find it's it's the number two. I mean, he's nicknamed Mad Dog, isn't he, Jason Tindall? I love Jason. <laughs> I've known him since he was a player at Bournemouth. But he's very often the agitator of the two. Eddie Howe is the calm head in the technical area. It's Jason Tindall who's in the face of the fourth official in, in the opposition dugout. So you're right, that will change that dynamic. Yeah, well, the other side of this break, we're going to see the effect it can have further down uh, the, the, the to grassroots level. Because you probably remember... The referee we spoke to, Dave Bradshaw, ended up in hospital, if you remember, because of what kicked off on the field of play. It was unbelievable what that poor fella had to put up with. Uh, Whether he's back back or not refereeing is another matter. We will get in touch, but we'll hear from him uh, as to what happened to him around that time. But this participant charter, is there anybody out there who wouldn't back it? Because if you don't back it, why wouldn't you back it? We're fed up of seeing players lose it in the field of play and managers, coaches lose it in the technical area. This could be the game changer that we need in terms of bad player and bad fan behaviour. The FA, the Premier League, the EFL, all behind it are you. And if you're not, why not? 
earlier on last season, uh, further down the pyramid, uh, it was a grassroots game. There was a referee by the name of Bra Dave Bradshaw. Alex, Dave joined us in the show and spoke very bravely about what happened to him on the field of play as a result of bad player behaviour. He, he ended up in hospital. He was in a heck of a state. I'm delighted to say that Dave Bradshaw was listening to our opening of the show this morning and joins us live. Dave, good morning. Good morning, Jim. Oh, it's so good to speak to you. You sound a different man to the one that was speaking to me from hospital. How are you, yeah. Dave? I'm very well, thank you. I'm doing good. Uh, life is brilliant uh, and I'm refereeing as well, probably more than ever. I'm loving it. I'm delighted to hear that. Uh, Alex is with me. We'll talk about this participant charter in a second. Remind everybody listening, and everybody's listening all around the country, what happened to you that day when it really kicked off? Well, I was repping a football match. Um, I'd sent a player off. Um, and later in the game, I'd to speak to the player again on the side of the touchline. Uh, this player, for some unknown reason, he was just lost the plot and was really wound up. And he said, I was coming after me. So I started walking away. And the next minute, I remember, I was unconscious on the floor. Apparently, uh, I did a scissor kick to the face. I uh, ended up with a, a dislocated shoulder, a um, couple of cracked ribs, concussion, and a weight lash. Um, it took me a few weeks to get over But I'd say about six or seven months to get over the injuries completely. I still suffer now with... A sore shoulder on the right, and my left shoulder is still sore, so I have physio for it. Um, but I went back reffing after two weeks. I'm just because of what happened to me, I'm not going to let it stop. Let me do something that I love. So I've been reffing now. This is my 29th season. Well done. And I'm not because of what some some person did to me. It's, it's going to put me off doing something that I love massively and with passion. Good, Dave. Good. Did this character get prosecuted? I think I had a police caution. Yeah. Police caution, Alex. Wow. There you go. Scissor kick to the back of the head for Dave. So, Dave, uh, Alex and I are mulling over this participant's charter. We like the sounds of it. Um, it's hard talk. Will it lead to hard action? Well, it, it, I think it's the best thing that's been done in years. And, and I, I talked to all my colleagues, uh, amateur referees, and it, everybody's excited about this. And we, we can all, every, every, anybody can say it's, it's too little, too late, but I disagree. I mean, the yeah, well, web's come on board. He's done a fantastic job and and building this up. And I think this is probably the best thing that's happens in twenty thirty years. Definitely, especially to the amateur. And most of this is because what you see a lot when on the TV. A lot of children what replicate what happens on the TV. They bring on to the the grassroots football. So more of the grassroots referees come the worst off in all this. Yeah, Dave, I've had a message uh, via Twitter so, suggesting that officials won't see this through. It will be quietly dropped in a few weeks because referees, uh, this tweet of Ryan says, don't have the backbone to enforce it, just like shirt pulling in the box and retrospective bans for diving. Uh, remember them, he asked. Have you got faith in your colleagues, particularly right at the top of the game, to stand up to intimidation from Premier League managers and, and Premier League players and to actually enforce these rules? Absolutely. So I'm making the person who's done the on Twitter is he a referee? Ask myself that straight away. So the change comes from the top, and and I I don't see any reason why, and I think they will. But they will. I mean, they will enforce this action uh, from day one. I mean, don't have the thing over Mourinho, which is scandalous and all that. But now change is there, and they can implement it. And I and I don't see any reason why they won't. And as we're going down to grassroots level, I, I don't. Lots of non-league amateur referees are sports who are very happy about this, and I know referees are going back into the sport, and they will implement this straight away. A few people I said, I said, how can a referee implement this? And it's straightforward, really. You get your team sheet to the end of the match that you send off to the league secretary. You put your comments on there, and what happens then? The league secretary will have a foul built up at certain clubs, and if need to be, is deduction points. And I'm, and I'm all for this as well in the program. I mean, in the amateur game, we have the same thing. And yeah, the, same many yeah. from the same word of action, like in rugby league, to referee as well. They put you in the same bin, and this is one thing I do think eventually they need to bring the same bin into the pro game. Okay, if you play in your face, ten minutes gone straight away, they will do it again. Dave, you're sounding good. I'm delighted you're back refereeing. Keep it going, my friend. It's great to speak to you again. Dave Bradshaw Thanks with us live that. this morning. Thanks, Dave. Stay well, mate. Uh, Joe's a Manchester United fan. Joe, do you like the sounds of this? Is this going to bring the change, Joe? We want. In theory, yes. Uh, I mean, I, I agree with everything that Alex has said, but I would slightly tweak it. 
for me as a football fan, the most frustrating thing for me to see is when players from my team gob off at the referee. There's no need for it. Dissent is, is an unnecessary action. So for every time they approach a referee and say something unnecessary, yellow card them. However, I'll take that further. Collect two yellow cards in a season, two-match ban. Get a third, three-match ban. Take it stage further. If the team collectively get 10 yellow cards for dissent, start docking points. That will change behavioural habits. That The FA have to have some sort of backbone. We've been promised and promised time and time again, but we are let down consistently by the governing bodies. Simple Oof. as that. Goodbye. They need a backbone. Goodbye, George. So hard talk's got to lead to hard action. That's what you're saying. Correct. It's simple yeah. as that, because players don't learn, and we have to start with the Premiership because it filters down. That there's no referee that crosses that white line to cheat, but we know day in, day out, when players cross that white line, they're trying everything on, yeah. from pulling shirts, dissent, everything. And that includes the managers. They're no better. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.